I am about to install my motor cutoff switch. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, but have not had the time. But before I do that, I just wanted to give a quick update on my Velcro pads. The Velcro is holding very well. I haven't pulled these off since I put them on, but I mean, they're doing pretty well. The glue is staying on, maybe except for the, the sharp corners. I bet if I would have rounded everything out a little bit more, they would have stayed on a bit more, but for the most part, they're staying on pretty well. So I'm pleased. But I need to take the cover off, open up the wheel to start the mod. Okay, so here's my little homemade switch thing. And this little guy right here gets plugged into the first slot. The one closest, at least on the M uh, the 100 volt M Super X model. Might be different if you have the 64 volt, but all gotways should have this this little slot available. But I'm gonna have to run the wire from here, up along here, and then through here. And then on the other side, I need to drill a hole in this area. So I can't see any way of doing this without splitting the shell. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I forgot one thing you need to do. You do need to remove this trolley handle in order to split the shell apart. I need to flip this wheel over, drill my hole, and then I'll feed it through, and then hopefully get the wire through there. Then at that point, it's just plug and play after I uh, cut, the, cut the wire to length and then solder this guy to the wire. Right, this is a little bit easier to see the components. So there's the rear light right there, and uh, obviously the tire. There's the power switch, the USB front headlight. So cool to actually see this. So I was told to use a half inch drill with this guy, but when I measured it, it measured just under 15, 30 seconds. So that's the drill that I ordered. Hopefully it's, it's the right size. It looks pretty close. Thinking if there is an interference fit, I can just thread it in. This guy is also really long. I feel like it doesn't need to be that long, but this is the one that was recommended to me. So I bought it like months ago. <laughs> but this is a, a, a latch switch. Not sure what it's called. But when you press it, it stays down and then when you push it you release it again. I didn't want to have to hold my thumb or finger down on it when I wanted to cut off the power to the motor. So I wanted a switch that would stay on. So the seat sits roughly right there. So I was planning on putting the switch right here in this area, but right through there. And there's plenty of space. I don't think it'll interfere with any of this hardware. I should double check that though before I drill my hole. All right, I've marked my little hole and done a little center punch. All right, there it goes. I'm probably not gonna film this because I don't want the pressure of drilling. I also don't wanna be critiqued of my horrible drilling. So I'm gonna drill this and 
come back. So I did want to share this. So I'm using the a step method. So I started out with one of these little drills, like a, just under an eighth inch uh, to make the, the pilot hole. Then I just used a five sixteenths to do the secondary hole. Now I'm doing the big guy. If I were to just do this on straight plastic, it would be really hard for it to do the initial cut. All right, not my best hole. I had actually quite a few problems with it. So as I was drilling in, I was going kind of slow at first and it was working well, but when drilling with thin material, as soon as it breaks through, the drill just wants to follow down and it gets sucked in and then you've got a square hole. So I ended up having to go back in with the smaller one, go in, break it up, kind of wiggle it around a bit, and I was able to get it. But as you can see, it is very ugly looking. But I've got a cover. I'm gonna be putting this button there. So hopefully, hopefully it fits. So before you put this in, be sure to unscrew this so that because this uh, little nut locks it into place. So make sure you take that off first. So my poor attempt to uh, try to mechanically bond these instead of just soldering them failed. Now that I have a soldering iron, I'm just going to solder these straight to the switch. And hopefully that'll be better. Whether or not I was successful with my soldering, We'll find out in the long run. <laughs> Luckily, if this faults, the wheel won't just cut off. But that seems like it's gonna be pretty sturdy. So now to attempt to put it back in the wheel again. Oh, the button is in now. Now I need to screw this guy back on and feed the wire through there and then I can put the shell back together and hopefully never take it apart ever again. Got my button installed, wired it through, or fed it through. Now I just need to cut this to length, and then solder the wires together, and then plug it in. I have already screwed in all of these. That wasn't too difficult, but do make sure that it's seated properly. So this is gonna get plugged in right there. I want a little bit of play, but not too much. So I think I'm gonna go right around here, right there. So I'm running out of daylight, <clears throat> and since I have some heat shrink coming in the mail, I'm just going to remove the, the rubber from the wire, I forget what that process is called, and uh, wrap it around this, and then put some electrical tape on it. And then when I get the heat shrink, and when I have more time and light, I will properly solder these together. I'll put the heat shrink on it. Still should work with uh, wrapping around and using electrical tape for the time being. But I'm going to hold off on soldering that together and I'll see you in a couple days, which will be a couple seconds for this video. Okay, so it's actually only been two days since my shrink wrap came. It came a lot sooner than expected. So now I can solder these wires together instead of just wrapping them around each other and taping them. Time to open up the heat shrink and finish this cutoff switch. Heat shrink goes right there. And then this one goes Here. For any of you who are wondering what size 
heat shrink to get. I believe it is the two millimeter diameter. See this one's right here. I got a, a pack of whatever this adds up to, 140 something pieces off Amazon for about five bucks. I've very poorly soldered my wires and now time to slip up the heat shrink and heat it up. Heat shrink is attached. And this is done. Maybe I'll zip tie these wires right there and call it good.